Okay, in this class, uh, it is basically a tutorial corresponding to the assignments that I posted. And if I can recall correctly, in my last class, I have, uh, I mean, theory class, I have discussed about uh, exception handling and I also took the example of stack template, writing a stack template. Right? Can you recall? Yes, sir. So the idea was uh, after learning some of the object oriented features in general, like uh, different kinds of polymorphism, that is uh, function overloading, operator overloading, we finally came across inheritance where apart from reusability of the existing uh, class definitions, we also learned how to write uh, base classes uh, with uh, or virtual base classes or virtual functions where the function binding is of polymorphic nature it implements upcasting and then we switched on to uh, templates which enables us uh, writing generic codes where or generic class templates or function templates where a function or a class can uh, we can write it without explicitly specifying the type of the basic data uh, data type that it will hold and that facilitates our writing of generic class templates where even for a stack, we don't have to repeat writing the same stack uh, code for a, a floating point stack or integer stack or character stack. So that was uh, kind of the extreme uh, benefit that you get from the compiler. Earlier, you uh, the compiler helped us in uh, not forcing us to recall distinct names it helped us in yeah, reusing the same symbols to associate uh, to write meaningful codes and now it can we can just write the logic focus on writing the logic and wherever we find that the data type can be possibly generic we can just assign a particular symbol corresponding to it and when we would like to create a particular class. I mean, so their class is an instance of a template. And once a class instance is created, then we create an object of that class instance also. So all these we, uh, we discussed. And finally, we uh, also talked about uh, a completely different feature that uh, it's not more of object oriented feature, but it is a useful feature which enables uh, runtime, uh, say, error handling. Okay. So we know how to error, <coughs> how to handle errors. We have to figure out the, the different cases of you know, errors. And generally, we always write in case of uh, stack or queue also. A possible overflow or underflow while you are calling push and pop are uh, are treated as error conditions because you cannot really push an element if it is overflowing or you cannot delete from an uh, from a stack uh, if it is empty so these things are also kind of errors so such errors till now uh, i mean uh, before that class probably you would have liked to write a C out statement which uh, actually gets executed and in the output if it really underflows or overflows it pops out pops out some messages 
so we found that there are specific exception handling uh, say keywords or facilities that is available in c++ which you can use to have the similar type of code but in a more smarter way where you don't actually mix up your error handling portion or your error handling uh, say code which may not be uh, that simple of just uh, displaying a error code uh, i mean a error message so if you have got something more to execute so that particular portion of the code uh, if we want we can dissociate it from the actual say the class code okay so there are ways to do that we have explained about this using three specific keywords try throw and catch so that was a summary of what we did till now in this particular tutorial i'll uh, explain i mean uh, i'll try to demonstrate the same stack class the template version of that that we i think uh, we did in some of my previous <coughs> classes i think last uh, it was the last second class probably and uh, i'll start with that one and i'll show that how apart from having a symbol parameter we can have a say a integer parameter also we'll see the syntax of that and we'll try to add exception handling code in that stack template so the focus is to <coughs> see how we can write a full fledged stack template class with exception handling facilities right so it will be all uh, i mean trying to include almost everything that uh, we have learned we would like to put together and i'll be demonstrating that exception handling code okay so this is one one portion of it and the uh, and accordingly i think you will be able to solve the uh, assignments that i have posted the assignments were mainly on uh, hashing the hashing code i think i have already shared the hash code right that i discussed long back are we having the hash code uh, the hash table class code did i share it with you can you uh, can you recall hello yes uh, yes sir i think we have it sir okay so i can once again share it uh, but i'm sure i have already uh, attached it in my along with the video lectures earlier so basically we'll be using that piece of code but there is a file given i think uh, many of you have already checked that assignment there is a file which is a roll sheet of some batch say second semester batch so in that roll sheet it is excel excel file and which i have converted to csv format comma separated values so if i open that csv format it's basically a text file which is where the fields in each row is basically separated by comma so once i uh, once you open that file you know that how the data in the file is organized corresponding to each and every student uh, in that particular batch right so you can write a small say parsing function which will parse and it will try to read the names the roll numbers the gender and the cgp or whatever information it is given there and what i have asked is to make entries in that hash table in terms of the names so i have assumed that the names are unique although it may not be the case okay so let us assume that or uh, i mean even if you consider the your say registration number is unique so in that case also registration number is not a pure say numeric value it is not just uh, integer values rather it composes of cs and all this so it's basically a alpha numeric code or a string you can say in general so considering that registration number or name to be the key value which distinguishes any two entries in that file 
we would like to hash that particular key value and we would like to create a record of that particular student that is objective so there i will be using i mean i would expect you to use the same hash code that i have written but before you can do that you have to convert it to a template hash class right if you convert it to a template hash class then uh, whatever is given to you i mean i mean so instead of storing integers it is just you have to store a record so accordingly you can modify so let me see if you can do that and definitely the hash function that i have explained there in that code it is an integer hash function if you use a alphanumeric key or a string key you have to use a different hash function okay so for that as i have mentioned in that assignment sheet you can use the universal hash function as mentioned there so that is the uh, um, assignment that i have given and uh, let me start with the stack template and if you have got any queries regarding that assignment you can ask otherwise i'll switch to uh, the graphs that i think i have not given any assignments on graphs so i'll explain the basics of graphs and uh, later on i can uh, pass on the few pages from adam drosdick book on graphs which you may read once and you have to implement the graphs and we'll see that how the graphs can be the graph data structure can be used from some of the existing data structures that we have already implemented so you don't have to write too much from the scratch even if we go for a graph implementation okay so you basically learn that how uh, some existing codes existing class templates can be just reused to create new class uh, new data structures or new classes okay how the the reuse facility in c++ can be extensively used okay so that's the objective so the next assignment will be uh, on graphs some of the applications of graphs some of the interesting application of graphs where you can uh, calculate the eigen value or the eigen vector of a graph and in in case of large graphs like uh, which models uh, social networks or like this Uh, you will find that these eigen values uh, comes up with very interesting insights to the graphs so i mean eigen vector uh, eigen vector to calculate eigen vector you have to uh, uh, find out the determinant so that we have already done so mostly our focus will be how to reuse the existing codes the existing functions or the class templates to uh, develop uh, small utilities uh, or that that is of uh, practical use okay that that will be the objective okay Okay, can you see this screen? Yes, sir. Okay, let us focus on this code. As you can see, this is a uh, class stack template class. Okay. so this is the the outline of the class template which includes the member functions the member data and as you can see here we have so in in the example that i discussed in my last class it was just template with class t right if i can find out that so it was
okay probably i have overwritten that so let us just focus on it so what it says as you can see it is a uh, uh, the pointer to an array of type t instead of integer we have considered to be a type t where t is a class symbol it can be integer float or it can be any other user defined class type also and these are all fine and here i have considered in the constructor it is having a default argument so this default argument what i want as you as you see here the default argument is t so what is this t so t i have considered t to be passed as a part of template instantiation so we discussed about uh, template parameters so there are two template parameters so instead of just having the symbol parameter the class symbol parameter we have used another parameter which is of specific integer type okay so when you instantiate the class or the stack uh, uh, a particular stack class type you can specify that what will be the value of this integer variable t okay and this value of t which you actually pass while you create it you can see here so this is how when you are instantiating the stack uh, the template we are calling it so earlier we called just uh, stack int now we say that stack int comma 3 so the value of 3 actually is assigned to that integer variable t okay so whenever we are calling uh, to instantiate or to create a particular stack object from this template stack we are passing we are, we are specifying the type of the uh, contents that that particular stack will hold and also the size of it so in case of float and file so this asf is a floating point stack object which can hold at most five floating point values this sc as you can see here so in this case we have passed here four and this nine so even though we have uh, asked it to create a stack of character stack of size 10 so in this case four and nine has been passed explicitly so it will consider this four and nine okay but because you have this value of t you have to pass it here okay so this is uh, another variation of uh, template class that you can see and when we do this if we have passed some argument while creating the object that will be assigned to x otherwise the value of t will be assigned to x so now uh, whenever you have got the uh, whenever you try to define the methods individual methods can you see the difference in the uh, syntax so here you write template class t but you also write integer t so this is the additional parameter that we have and in addition to that while specifying the scope of this function is empty or is full we write here earlier we wrote stack t now we write stack t comma small t so we specify both the symbols that we use okay so that's the only change so the only change is uh, in this part and in this part while we define the different functions member functions so this is the only difference as well as uh, we have got the difference in the top also here and this value of t may be used anywhere in the uh, i mean throughout this class so if you want you may use the value of t maybe here or maybe in the push or pop whatever because the t is passed while you are creating a instance of the template 
and it can be used uh, throughout. It's kind of, uh, uh, it's almost uh, something similar to the global variable. Okay. So the rest of the piece of the code is simple enough. So this portion just illustrates the use of a stack template class with one symbol parameter of class T and another integer parameter whose, whose name is T. So here you can see the number of ways we can create uh, or instantiate the stack template and trying to instantiate floating point stack, float, uh, integer stack, character stack, etc. And we are calling here push pop and all this. Okay, so if we run this code, the name template stack. Okay, let's work on this copy. Also the same one. problem Did I miss something? I checked it already. It was working. What's wrong? Using namespace studios. Again, the same problem anyway. I just uh, ran it, but I don't know why it is not working again. Okay, so it was working and something was. Okay, so the same thing worked. So. I don't know again what went wrong. Something got mistyped probably. Sir, did you save it after modifying? Hmm? Sorry? Did you save save it after modifying, sir? Yes. Uh, this version itself I, I just tested earlier. So that's not the issue. I mean, something, something went wrong. I just checked because of the error that I got in the last class. I just checked today. Anyway, so let's uh, 
just believe that it will work and i'll uh, uh, before i post it in the group mail i'll make sure that it works something went wrong once again some some something silly mistakes are you cannot track it okay so the, so just focus on the syntax and uh, it will work so the, this this same thing worked actually okay so the main focus is this one so how how we can pass another additional parameter while instantiating a class template okay so the next thing that i wanted to show is uh, how to use the feature of exception handling so as i mentioned in a, in case of a stack what can be the exception uh, we can have trivial so exceptions are unwanted situation unwanted situation means that is something abnormal uh, that happens during execution so that which you cannot predict uh, when you are writing the code i mean uh, so based on the values that you give at some point of time sometimes the exception exceptional condition or abnormal condition occurs so in this case as i mentioned it can be the overflow or underflow this can be tagged as an exception condition because if it happens you probably cannot proceed further and you have to stop okay because if you want to push something in the stack and if, if the stack is full so probably you have to abort immediately so how to add that exception handling code so can you see this so definitely we would have the exception handling code added in the push and the pop okay so if i get back to the basics of exception handling i mean just recall those points there were there were three keywords one is the throw one is the catch and and there is a try so what we did so maybe in the push in the push method in the stack class so what the other details so in the push if we check if is overflow if it is not then we actually push so we basically assign a of top so the value of x or something like that so t of x if it is a template type so it will be you will like this t of x and this x is assigned and then copy modify all this so these are there but else if it is not the case then it is an exception condition so else we can an exception condition so else what happens what do i need to do earlier what i did what we did earlier so here we write see out you write uh, here that it's overflow and after displaying the overflow situation what we did generally what you do while pushing in a stack if you get an overflow then what you do what action you take sir we just return we just return so when you return something you probably return minus 1 and if you try to return something you probably write here int so this int is basically of no use it is just trying to return the error code so if it is minus 1 means it has failed to push and if it has returned say say 1 uh, i mean 0 or 1 maybe you interpret it as to be a successful operation okay so this is basically you can say this is the 
this is the exception handling code that we usually are uh, familiar with placing it here itself and instead of this if we try to use these exception handling features so catch and try can you recall which one which of these uh, keywords should i use here to do something uh, different sir try hmm so you should write here try right so here we should write so i just remove the whole stuff and i should write here what should i write try or what try is it try no so here what it means it is exception is detected you have already so this is the uh, you are detecting exception detecting exception and here exception is detected now you are trying to do something so so try to recall whenever exception got detected so the action that you take you just try to throw something throw some object to denote that something has happened okay got it so maybe so maybe this is a small play, play say here you people are playing and, and so they are playing and they are so that they find a snake that is moving so once they do the they will throw a stone okay so they will throw something throw some object so they will throw a stone that means something so they need immediate help something like that now if they find something else if they find that the maybe the the ball was the, they, they were playing that got punctured or, or something like that. so they, they will show something different i mean they, they show different type of object so the thing is something is happening here and if you detect something exceptional which actually uh, stops you playing so depending on the type of the exception or depending on the type of the abnormality that happens you are trying to throw certain uh say certain type of objects which denote i mean if you can examine that you can figure out what has happened actually okay so if you throw a plus symbol say for or, or i mean a kind of so this is not a symbol it's a object like this that means you have so something has happened if you if you throw something like like this type of object something else has happened like that or if you if you throw something like this type of object something else has happened okay so basically what you do once you detect some exceptional situation you basically perform a throw is that fine can you recall that can you recall so let's say yes sir so now now you are throwing something maybe in this case you are trying to throw some object because you so you people are playing within an enclosure and something has happened you just throw and that signals that something has happened so whoever is passing here or maybe there are maybe your so parents are here okay the children are playing and parents are here so once they know something so there there are some some other persons who are who will take care of this so now what they will do so if something is thrown so these persons will basically are there to catch those objects okay so this person is basically meant for catching this type of object this person is basically meant for catching this type of object and this person is mainly for this type of object right so they basically what they do is they literally catch things so they basically catch okay so in this case also whenever you detect an exception you basically have to throw now you say that throw means what should i throw now 
so you say that if it is a push operation and if you are detecting a overflow then you are probably throwing some object say for example uh, i ovl what is this i ovl it is a integer object integer value means it's a integer object so basically throwing a integer object okay so what where do you think this integer object should be declared so this is an integer object so where it should be declared where should be where i should outside need to main. declare this outside main. main so this will be global so maybe here i declare i uh, so this is a different color so here i write int i o v l now you say that okay i I'll, i mean before i throw it i mean maybe i initialize it with zero and before i throw it i assign i o v l as 1 okay and throw the uh, throw the object so the object along with the we thrown okay you put something in that and, and just and, and just throw it like this so now what you need to have if you if you have thrown something what you need to have now to have some catch codes where should be the catch codes so the catch codes so where from this throw is coming so maybe this throw is coming you see this is main and probably you are calling here push okay some some stack object you have created stack say t and then s okay so s5 so now you are trying to push s dot push say 7 s dot push say 20 s dot push okay so say 15 like this and you would like to ensure that whenever this push functions are called you don't encounter or i mean if you encounter exceptional conditions like overflow then in the push you have made some provisions that if there exception is detected these objects i mean uh, integer objects specifically declared as uh, for this purpose i i o v l will be thrown so once they are thrown so the thing is once it is thrown from here so actually you are getting this throws here right if if there if there is any so you'll be getting things from here so where do you expect the catch code to be placed where should be the catch code so the push the control comes here and it throws throws means basically from here it comes out this iovl may come out from here right so where you should be placing the catch code here some persons were catching so here here you should write some catching codes so where should you write it are you getting my question yes sir immediately after this right so here when you write try to write the catch so say maybe here i write so this is a catch code so this catch iovls so these are integers let us have uh what i would say integer integer exception sir your voice is breaking say i
maybe i can name it as i so this i is my can you hear me is the connection on yes sir yes sir yes sir so may i continue or may i have to switch on to a different network so can you hear me clearly now it's okay sir uh, previously your voice was breaking okay maybe i i, I moved a bit far that's why anyway so this catch if i write here int i so here whatever i wrote here that i can write here so see out now to distinguish from the previous error message now i can write exception overflow this is the throw keyword which enables the throwing of a specific object as the designer has planned to the programmer has planned whenever this type of exception occurred and once it is thrown this catch block if there is a suitable catch block which is able to hold or i mean catch the integer objects it will just catch it and it will try, it will just do whatever is required so in this case it is just displaying the message that is an exception overflow exception that has occurred that's all sir so yes sir in the push member function uh, instead of checking the overflow condition by if uh, can we use try for that no try is not used there i mean i'm coming so this is explicit but there is no there is nothing automatic here you have to explicitly so you know what the what the condition which can figure out the exception so the condition that detects the exception that need to be clearly specified there is no, nothing automatic here so, so you see the detection of the exception is as is same as that of in the previous case right in the detection there is no difference now the thing is if i simply write this throw and catch will this work it will not work to activate this uh, exception handling feature we have to write this within the try block okay if we write it in the try block so this is try so we have created what the only <clears throat> only then this throw will be activated okay so within this try block if you don't have throw nothing will happen and if you have if you are having this throw but if you don't have this try block then also it will not work so this means what you may what you may do maybe that here if you call push push the 10 so this push you may think i mean i mean optional the option is you may decide this push not to be included in the try block maybe because you are very much sure that at least the first element will not overflow will not create an overflow right but i would expect the rest of the push statements that should 
check and throw exceptions if they occur okay so when this this particular push is called even though there is a throw so the same push is called but even though there is a throw this, this throw will not be activated or this is not actually done but i would in this case i would uh, force this exception and limitism when these three push statements are uh, i mean this replaces the push is called so that's why i put them within the try block and immediately after the try block i have to have the catch block this is a catch block okay which <coughs> tries to catch whatever the throw uh, actually so whatever the throw keyword or the throw throws what type of whatever the objects the throw throws provided there is a match so if you write a catch we say float type so definitely this will not be able to that catch will not be able to match or in in some sense will be able to throw uh, will be able to catch a uh, integer type object right which is thrown by this throw operation are you getting my point hello yes sir so if i if i by, by mistake so if i write here okay so instead of int if i write here flow this will not work so it is your responsibility to provide suitable catch blocks also which will match with this now if i would like to write or if i would like to have the facility of exception handling in the pop also then what should i do not working at all so pop if not underflow uh, uh, is underflow then you actually do that part i mean uh, remove it from the stack else this is the exception right exception detected and here you may decide that if it is a overflow i'll be uh, throwing a specific integer object with a specific value like iovl in case of pop what you may decide you may decide to throw some some other type of objects what may be that instead of integer you, you may just to maybe to distinguish what what you may try to throw here what type of object hello instead of integer what you may throw hello are you getting me yes sir am i audible yes so sir what, yes what what you may throw here so what you may would like to throw here maybe a float type object say i mean this is just an example so float ovl so in this case you have to declare this float f ovl and this also you set it to zero and before you actually throw you may set it to f ovl to maybe any value as you wish so maybe 1.0 or 5.0 and you throw it so here the so, so the idea is you are basically throwing a float object in case you have got a exception which is underflow exception 
okay and maybe that you instead of push and pop so here we are having you are calling pop also so all this push pop will be under the try block so if it is a push it will be it may it, it will not always it may uh, throw a iovl object if it is pop it will throw a float object so just after the try as we have included a catch block which matches with interior uh, objects and it will match it it will, it will catch it and it will uh, say take these actions so it is just like uh, if it matches this catch block activates and this portion is executed so to take care of this fovl or uh, this underflow exceptions what do we need to have here what do you need hello are you getting me hello Anil. yes sir now so what do we need earlier it was only push now i have included pop also and i would like to throw such exceptions whenever there is a underflow in terms of fovl so fovl is a floating point object so once it is thrown the object is thrown somebody need to what need to do here somebody need to catch it right can you follow me or i'm just uh, just keep talking one way yes sir y yes sir so try to answer otherwise it seems that sometimes the connection went off sometimes it seems that you are not at all listening so at least uh, some of you should uh, try to interact otherwise it becomes difficult for me so catch what should i write here sir float 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 maybe you write here fe okay and then this is whatever i want to write i write regarding the message and just to distinguish that this is not this exception underflow okay so that is how it works now if i want this uh, this exception handling uh, not to work then i can remove this try and if i remove the try i must ensure that this throw is not activated so now if i remove the try this throw will not work and at the same time if i have say for example uh, i have written both the throw or i have tried to handle both the exceptions the overflow and the underflow as interior object or as a floating point object which is shown here and if i have missed any of these two say maybe i have missed the first one the catch interior ie if i miss this piece of code what do you expect so whenever there is a overflow action overflow exception so there will be a compiler error message because if you have placed or if you have made this uh, throw or if you have written this throw statement there should be some catch corresponding to that otherwise the compiler says that i can i don't know what to do so the how to ha handle the exception because you, this is an exceptional situation but you have not mentioned the code to be executed during that exception so this is a exception handling function or except exception handling uh, action taking or corresponding to that exception so the the only advantage that you can see here it may seem very trivial trying to complicate the whole thing but it is not actually so in a true scenario such catch blocks might have uh, many such statements i mean it, it's not just uh, displaying that okay it's an underflow or overflow so maybe uh, you may have to do many things here and 
that portion that uh, that piece of code which will be required to be executed only when there is exceptional situation we have been able to dissociate that as you can see here we have been able to dissociate it from the original push or original pop function code so it is completely in a separate place and this be, this becomes very simple it's just like if it happens just throw it that's all throw this object somebody will catch it and take care of it and whoever reads the push operation he just sees the push is very simple and compact is that part okay yes sir unfortunately the code is not working i know i this morning also i checked and it worked anyway so here you can see here so when i uh, so let me get back to that example so somehow i have created that uh, those instances and here you can see the exception stack overflow corresponding to this so here if you look into this let us come to the push function here is a push method i hope you can see so this is throw if ovl okay and where is if ovl declared it is here so it's kind of global declaration so these are uh, objects be thrown when exception occurs okay and these are kind of uh, globally declared objects It. and this is actually thrown and here as you can see if i put it here under try and if i have got this catch enabled i just commented it but after all it is not working it's a mistake okay so here we are creating the instances of the stack objects and here we are calling push and pop multiple times on on these objects and we have included within the try block and here af just after the immediately after the try we have got the catch blocks so this is the uh, underflow catch underflow handling code and the overflow handling code and probably you can see from the output that whenever there is a problem in overflow or exception in overflow as you can see see out even though i have written stack overflow and returning minus 1 but immediately the control comes out from this method from this point in the else part the control comes out here jumps out of it if there is an exception if exception occurs the control jumps out from here so as a result uh, you will never i mean this see out stack overflow statement will never occur will never uh, be displayed in the output neither this return will be executed because the control anyway comes out from here so this is basically redundant and it's of no use so this portion is of no use same in case of pop in case there is an exception which is detected it is empty then it throws iovl so it is just the reverse that i have done here so it doesn't matter so here also the control comes out and without this see out stack over underflow getting executed okay just to show that okay this will not actually trigger 
at any moment and here just to distinguish between that message and this one which is displayed in the cache block i have explicitly mentioned here the exception stack overflow that means this is the customized message which is a part of the exception uh, the catch block of the exception handling code okay and this gets reflected here so maybe the uh, the modified code that i'll send you you will be able to see that it works okay any question from this part any queries no sir so you you may try i mean uh, as i mentioned it's not possible for me right now so if you if you say comment this catch and still you create a overflow uh, say underflow exception then see what happens then you will find that there are some typical messages i think might be here okay no. so they will find some error messages so the idea is if you if you are throwing some type of object and if there is no suitable matching catch block here then what the compiler will do i mean what kind of response the compiler will give and the thing is uh, that response will occur in run time so it is not that Uh, during the compilation, it will give. So it will in the runtime. If you have thrown that type of object, only then it will be detected that okay, there is no suitable catch block, and it will it will give an error message. Okay. And at the same time, if you have not included any particular push or pop under the try block, definitely, even if there is a exception that has occurred it will not trigger the uh, this catch or whatever so it is known that try catch and throw will work together but if i remove one of them or the other one of them so how uh, the code will look like and what kind of messages error messages you will get that you have to uh, try and change and see okay okay now let me just uh, may i continue with the uh, graphs right now or i stop the class today the graph data structures that i have not po uh, posted the assignments so the next assignment will be on the graph data structure so may i continue with this or will i continue in the next tutorial hello sir uh, your wish now so will you be able to uh, i mean i don't think you have a class but if you is okay so let me just do it because this is uh, not uh, completely new So do you know what is a graph? Yes, sir. What is a graph? Tell me quickly. Don't take so much of time. What is a graph? Whatever you know. Sir, it's a data structure which have nodes which are connected by edges. See, uh, first of all. Uh, graph is uh, no way related to data. so you can write a data structure which will implement a graph but graph is not a data structure graph is just a uh, is a mathematical tool to model the relationship between uh, entities a set of entities uh, it will represent some entities and their relationships right so graph is basically a way of modeling the relationship between entities right now that model can be implemented using a data structure that is fine so 
what is a graph what are the components of a graph in a graph model what are the two things that we have the nodes and edges yes, nodes and edges. and edges so if we have got these are the nodes if these are the nodes and maybe these are the edges connecting the nodes okay so this is a graph right so graph consists of v comma e where v is a set of vertices what are the set of vertices a b c d and e and f and e is the set of edges where what are the edges here you see a to d is an edge uh, sorry uh, e to d is an edge then b to d is an edge then we have uh, d to f we have got e to f we have got c to f is that fine so this particular graph is a view of the graph and this is how the graph can be denoted so this particular graph can be denoted by this the node set and the edge set okay is a set of edges and the set of nodes or vertices okay so this uh, and in this case the cardinality of this set is in this case is 6 uh, the cardinality of the edge set is 1 2 3 4 5 that's a case now there can be several examples of such graphs so graph is basically a way of modeling some real life scenario okay and what it basically captures this model the interaction or the association between nodes so here nodes are the basic things like a graph so can i say can this be a graph can this be a graph this one no sir hmm can this be a graph what is a vertex set a what is the vertex set here a now what is the edge set it doesn't have it uh, there is no edges so it's a null set right so yes, this also sir. is possible so is this possible so can we say this is a graph can we say this is a graph it is a graph right because you said that it, it's a graph it's a very trivial graph having just one vertex or node and there are no there are no edges at all so this may be possible so another extreme can be like this so we have got a we have got b we have got c we have got d can this be a graph say this is graph g1 can this be called as a graph g2 some other graph hello yes sir there are no edges but there are plenty of vertices so these are all so these we called as a isolated nodes so that is also possible so these are disconnected graph right hmm the second one g2 it's a disconnected graph right? definitely it is disconnected so this also is disconnected so this g is also disconnected you see this is one component so this we call as say say this we call as this is a component of a graph and this is another component of a graph component 1 component 2 and this is all isolated nodes so how many components will be there the number of components will be same as the number of vertices now can 
can this be a graph are you getting point here can this be a graph got my point so it is g3 so v is what it is a and e is what it is do you agree yes sir so this is it's a kind of self loop you, you can say it's a uh, self loop kind of thing. so that is also possible so these are simple graphs but this in this case uh, uh, edge is connected to itself that also is possible and, and sometimes you know in a state transition diagram uh, i think you you are aware of the state transition diagram in uh, uh, in your automata theory also you found that there are some states defined computational states and there are transitions okay so a particular node may be having a connected to itself it's a edge connected to itself so sometimes you see so if you find that okay so whatever activities you perform each activity is a state so you are sleeping so sleeping is a activity so you basically sleep you study then you eat then you play okay so these are the say say these are the four activities that you have a student may have now maybe if you consider a half an hour as a time slot so when you are studying so you you study so you study for a while so after you study then what will be the transition what what may be the possible transition after you have studied a bit maybe after that you get tired and you always eat so that is your trend you always eat or you go to you go for playing okay and once you play for a while maybe after immediately after playing you get so tired so immediately after playing you always eat and then only you go for study so if you study for a long you can eat and keep, get back to study and all this this can be done so like this and maybe hours after hours you keep studying like this so this also is possible so time is basically slotted in uh, as one hour and maybe after studying instead of eating in the in, in the late night you go for sleep and you keep sleeping for hours and after you sleep you again get back and you know you take some food and you again study so that's the case okay so this is also valid you, you see this this makes sense because that means you keep sleeping for a long, long time so you sleep and being in the sleep mode you again go uh, you again uh, make a transition to the sleep so you sleep for some continuous amount of time and this means that means you don't play beyond one hour like that now in a typical uh, this lockdown or pandemic situation what happens maybe uh, you you strike off this this option completely there is no play so you basically study get tired you go for a sleep you get back to sleep you eat and again study and there is no nothing else you do <coughs> so you right at this moment there is playing is almost like outdoor uh, uh, play is almost obsolete so there is no transition Uh, to that and it becomes a isolated activity activity node okay so there are examples many such examples so this is one uh, activity which is uh, human activity can be modeled as a node and when you uh, do some kind of uh, smartphone based activities you can define such activities you are jogging you are you know uh, browsing the net you are doing so multiple activities are there which can be sensed through the sensors at you know uh, attached in the smartphones when you are walking also you can if you have the smartphone you can sense your accelerometer signals 
uh, signatures and we'll find out what is what you are doing if you are making a phone call and talking to your friend also you can you can notice so maybe throughout the day you can uh, identify several such uh, distinct activities and you can figure out that uh, how much or what is the probability for transition from one activity to the other so if it is so so you can get back you, you can represent your daily routine as a graph which models your activities right so there maybe uh, the study <coughs> so here maybe that you can associate so from, from study uh, what is the probability that you sleep maybe the probability is uh, 0.2 because immediately after study you basically will be eager to eat because there is no other so maybe this is 0.8 so that's the case and after you after you sleep uh, after you uh, take a nap then you definitely eat so it is just one the probability is one sorry i mean uh, okay so probability may be 0.5 and 0.5 because you you may so while you are sleeping the probability that you keep sleeping is 0.5 and the probability that you wake up and go for eating is 0.5 and once you eat the probability that you study is just one because after you eat you always go for study and then you spend some time or here you may have it 0.6 and make it 0.6 plus 2 0.8 and this is 0.2 so this means uh, so this activity of a student who uh, the tendency to study for long is very less because you see once he study uh, the most often uh, he will be switched to the eating mode and or it will be he will be going to the uh, to take rest or with a very small probability we will study so different students or different persons will have a different activity profile which can be modeled as a graph and once it is modeled as a graph you can do lots of you know interesting uh, investigations on its activities and you may say that okay if you did say uh, you studied uh, then you slept for a while and uh, took the food then what probably is the next thing that you are going to do okay what is the probability or maybe uh, now if you are studying for long and if you have done uh, during the last 3 hours you have done these these activities so what will be your next next predicted activity and that is very important so if you have, if you know your next predicted activity probably you can proactively take some measures uh, so you can do something okay so there are many things that you can do i mean uh, while you process a graph and there can be many other examples of graphs also in the social media so you have got your friends and these uh, say these connections between two nodes can be uh, may model how many times you have interacted with your friend so maybe this a b c d e these are friends in a class in a batch say maybe you are having say six friends you have formed a batch and maybe this e and f they are interacting they are communicating they are talking they are messaging and all this and uh, you you give an weightage to it, towards it okay so this is say with a weightage w1 and this weightage is w2 w3 like this and you see that this this particular student he remains isolated i mean he never speaks with others he is a completely kind of introvert kind of you can see that interactive actually active sir your voice is breaking so hello sir in between your voice is breaking again again the voice is breaking am i audible now yes sir uh, in between it's happening okay sometimes maybe i'm moving up far from the microphone anyway if it is breaking too much then let me know that Other, otherwise i mean i can then uh, uh, use a different network maybe a geo network i'm using the institute network right now so i think i'm audible yes sir now it's okay hmm. so here in a in a in a social media if you have modeled the interaction of the friends as a graph so these are the weights and these are the isolated components okay and there if you have got multiple components means you have no you, you know that there are multiple groups of students that are formed so those are the groups they they are they more more or less they talk among each other 
and they don't talk. Uh, so th that is a normal tendency in the social network, in a in a social gathering. Uh, maybe in a party also you'll find that it's not that everybody is talking to everybody. There are I mean you form small groups and you keep talking with uh, based on your interest or based on your association and acquaintances and all this. So that is, and and maybe somebody they, they are completely isolated. They are just observing others, and those are the introvert kind of people. So that's a situation. So uh, many situations, uh, social scenarios, your activities, and uh, many things can be modeled as a graph. So the graph is uh, a, a very interesting and a very powerful way of modeling, uh, say, the interactions among nodes. And these interactions, what is what do you mean by interaction? That depends on the domain that you are dealing with. Okay, so this may be, and sometimes in the graphs you will find that there are different two different types of nodes. So here, you know, the all the nodes are of same type. So these are all activities. These are all the students or the your friends, you know, persons. Now it may happen that sometimes you have, say, take this example. You have got the actors. So these actors are like A1, A2, A3, A4, and these are the movies M1, M2. M3 like this, okay. So these are the pool of actors, and these are the pool of movies. And I know this actor, this actor has acted in this movie, this actor has acted in this movie. So they are they are two co-actors, and this A2, they have acted on this movie, and A4 has acted on this movie, okay. And A5, he has acted in this movie like this. So if this happens, that uh, so, do you know what what kind of graphs these are called as where the nodes where the nodes are of different types you see here the nodes are of same type but here the there are two distinct types of nodes and there are it is representing some interaction so uh, these are movie movie nodes and these are the actor nodes right so do you know what kind of graph this is called as this graph g the director hmm Bipart. Yes, somebody was uh, telling the name. What, what is that? By. Bipartite graph. Bipartite. So bipart means that there are so bipartite for is a term comes. There are two partitions of nodes. So the nodes are basically divided into two types. So two partitions. And when you think of interactions, the interaction edges are uh, among one from uh, so uh, among the entities one from this side one from this side that's all so generally having a having an edge between two movies does not make sense i mean that is how the problem is or you know the scenario is so these are bipartite networks or bipartite graphs right so in these bipartite graphs i think in a movie actor so if you look into the imdb imdb database is very much available publicly so in the imdb you have got the name of the movies and the name of the actors and you can always form a bipartite graph and the bipartite graph there may be several interesting questions that can be uh, that can be formulated so one question can be like <clears throat> do you have the lobbies of actors like you know that there are certain actors or say actresses do, those who form lobbies and there are lots of social media uh, you know uh, comments that goes on that they always form a group and they don't uh, allow others to enter so so ca can we uh, say uh, through the analysis of data can we reveal such uh, maybe you can say nexus or groups or whatever i mean they can, that can be for good also so can we form that and can we say over years that has happened or maybe can you say that okay these movies so these actors mostly act on these kind of movies so those movies actually represent a kind of genre okay so there can be many interesting such questions or at the same time can you figure out that if a particular movie comes with these these actors so whom you can predict as a co-actor so can you predict that who will be the who is going to be the co-actor from the previous patterns that you find so these are maybe these may be some interesting questions in a typical uh, say a uh, social network something like this can you figure out who is going to be uh, which particular which particular uh, person is having a very high centrality centrality means uh, who is a most popular person 
so definitely as you can see in terms of the interaction he is very popular you can see so in terms of the citation network where you know uh, th there are there are papers that we publish so these are the papers that we publish okay and each paper it cites some previous so this paper cites some previous paper so it cites this paper it cites this paper and this paper cites this paper okay and this paper cites this paper this paper and this paper so this is typically called a citation network got it so this is these are the research papers and these are the citations that we give so i refer to some previous uh, papers so there is a normal trend so from this citation network can i figure out what is the most popular paper i mean within a certain time span so what do you mean by popularity in a node so how how do you define a node popularity or this problem can be considered that these are html pages okay these are html pages web pages and these are the hyperlinks so if it is so can i uh, figure out based on this hyperlink structure can i figure out which one is the most popular web page so that is uh, the simple thing is web page or you know so that uh, i would expect that the search engine should return those pages always so popularity is also something that we are interested in in such a uh, and you should first notice that these graphs when you say it is graph it is uh, generally we assume it to be a very small number of edges i mean relatively small that is manageable but when we say these are networks so networks is a more generic term network it means a large graph so large graph this spans several millions of nodes so maybe it often it is found that some some algorithms which is, is suitable for application in small graphs or small net set of nodes or edges they become completely obsolete when you deal with this uh, networks of very large networks or um, sometimes they are called complex networks and there uh, probably you have to deal with uh, some probabilistic algorithms so you you can't say even in this case it's a very simple case but in 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 this case if you say i was studying and what will be my next step what will be next next activity you cannot say for uh, with certainty so there are you know almost like uh, say uh, never ending i mean the the examples can be many things and that's why the graph is i think is one of the uh, well studied and a very interesting model and we can always write a data structure for that if we have a data structure for that whatever i mean for for a movie database network or a social network or activity network we can always map it to that and we can perform some analysis and get some interesting insights okay say like uh, in this popularity of a node in a graph it can be easily evaluated if we uh, go for the google page rank algorithm which uses the which actually uses the eigen vector centrality so you have to represent the graph as a matrix you have to calculate the eigen vector and the uh, uh, eigen vector of the matrix and the uh, and the components of that eigen and once you do that from that from the principal eigen you can derive which one is the most popular network uh, popular node and in fact some modification of that is actually used in the google page rank okay so that's why graphs there are lots of variants of the graph so this is a directed graph this is say this is a undirected graph this is a bipartite graph okay so the, this is a graph with multiple components and all this uh, since like last uh, almost a decade or so almost like two decades uh, we have got lots of large networks that are available from different sources of di from different domains and uh, there are there is a volume of work that has considered analysis of graphs or networks network analysis or graph analysis or large scale graph analysis then time variant graph analysis and all this okay so now let us come to the problem so if this is a graph given how you represent the graph how you uh, how you represent this model in form of a data structure so what we just now found so this is as you can see so i know that every node is associated with a set of nodes maybe all the nodes or a set of nodes right that is a basic association hello 
Yes, sir. So you can see here. So now somehow I have to store this information. So the, whatever I can see here need to be stored. If I can store it, I can do many things that I know. And like only very few I have uh, uh, explained. I mean, what can be the possibilities? And I would expect you to go through the book by Adam Grosdeck. The in that book there is a chapter on graphs, and it is worth reading the whole chapter. You will get a uh, lots of ideas, and maybe the basic algorithms are covered in the algorithms course also. But try to write uh, some of those uh, implement some of those algorithms to get some confidence of how to work deal with graphs. But because these days you have got Python and all this code, so probably uh, you may not be. Uh, it's not required to write all those code, but it's always uh, better to write few of them uh, to get a feel of how it works and when it fails in in some extreme situa situations. Okay, so I'll give some of them as uh, as your uh, assignments. Those were, those were not which are not tough but still interesting. So first of all, how to represent a graph. How to store the information of a graph? Okay. So as you can see here, we can say that these are the nodes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and these are the edges, and these are undirected graph. This is an example of undirected graph. Now here A, what to represent? Who are the neighbors of A? So here neighbor means. Those who are immediately connected to A, so A has got neighbors as E, F, and D. So that's why I write here, uh, sorry, C, F, and D. B, it has got neighbors D and A, D and E. C, it has got neighbors A and F, like this. So this information. What we can call it as what information is stores? What you can call it in general? Hello? Can you give a name to it? What it uh, captures? Can you call it adjacent information? Yes, sir. So this is adjacency information, right? So this adjacency information. So this is so from this model that we can see, I have extracted this adjacency information. Now my question is, how do I how do I store this adjacency information? Okay. So this is option one. And this is option two. What is option one? So I am storing it. So can you see a matching between these two? I mean, how it does? Can you see this? So you see, corresponding to each node, we have got a entry. We have got a kind of list. Okay. So this is a list. This is a list. So these are lists. So corresponding to each node, you have got a list, and this is basically a collection of lists, right? And what each list stores? So A, who are its neighbors? So it says that A, it has its neighbors are C, D, and F. B, its neighbors is D and E, like this. So how this list can be represented using data structure? What are this? What is this? This can be. So It's this linked list. This is a linked list. So this is a linked list one. This is a linked list two. This is a linked list three. Linked list four. Linked list five. And linked list six. Linked list seven. Okay. And G C. You see, G is isolated. It's no connected component. So basically, this is not pointing to anybody. So this is basically null. Okay. So as a whole, this graph, the information of the graph or the adjacency information of the graph can be represented as a collection of linked lists. Is that fine? Yes, sir. So this is what is called as adjacency. So it's better known as adjacency list. 
okay now instead of having this you see instead of having a also i mean this as a node and pointing to this i could have made it as as you can see here i could have declared an array of these nodes okay this is an array and so once this is an array so this link will go off right so it's something like this can you follow me because i already yes, know sir. that how many nodes are there in the graph and again i mean i am making a very strong assumption that the graph size is not increasing or the number of nodes is not increasing and there are many instances of real life graphs where it's a dynamic graph so dynamic graph means the number of nodes are also increasing or decreasing so there is a churn i mean some nodes are failing and in a social network it happens in any real networks this happens right so new nodes are added and uh, uh, existing nodes go off in a computer network also this happens okay so if that is not the case for simple cases we can assume that the number of nodes are fixed and if this is fixed we can declare a array of such lists okay so graph addresses information can be uh, say represented in form of addresses list where it is denoted as a array of linked lists is that fine can we interpret that yes sir the other implementation is so we know that this is how this so this is, you see we have got a matrix that is say we have got what v is equals to 6 so it's a 6 cross 6 matrix okay so if it is a 6 cross 6 matrix now each element of it so each of this say 0 uh, represents a 1 represents b 2 represents c like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 or maybe 0 1 2 3 4 whatever so this particular cell so as you can see here each cell is either each cell ij is either 0 or it is 1 so this cell value is so in this case if it is 0 means there is so i the the node i and node j they are not adjacent and if it is 1 means node i and node j are adjacent right this is what it denotes is that okay yes sir so basically i i denote or i captured the addresses information in form of a matrix of size 6 cross 6 of size this cross this where each of the cell ij it will be it's a it's a basically a binary matrix it's a it's a binary matrix of size if we cross if we where if it is zero means the i and j ith uh, ij node they are not having any edges common to it otherwise they are having edges so that is also another way of doing things so if we do so we call it as adjacency matrix so this is another way so this is one option this is one option of representing graphs got the point yes sir so first thing is given this or given any such examples that i have just now discussed so this this or this somehow how to capture the information so this is how we can capture how we can capture the information either in form of adjacency list or in form of adjacency matrix and if you think of a dynamic graph there are other data structures which are more efficient and maybe here you can add some nodes and re remove some nodes also so uh, let us not complicate things right now because there are many variants of graphs and uh, and many interesting variants and which uh, are equally challenging also how to represent and all this so i mean before i uh, stop the class so can you say which one is more efficient in terms of space sir list adjacency list because if you say in case of g in case of g g has not got any neighbors and no neighbors means no, no information is also stored but here in case of matrix you see you need to have a entire row just denoting all zeros even though you have got so the thing is in case of sparse matrix you see this is uh, uh, sparse graphs so th these are not dense dense in the sense 
if a graph has got n number of nodes how many possible edges can be there at at, at most if a graph has got n number of edges uh, sorry n vertices how many edges can be there max number of edges and what can be the maximum number of edges possible n minus 1 Hmm? No, no. Sir, N C two. N C two. Right. So you have got six friends. I mean, six students comprise a batch. So how many friendship? Friendship means one edge denotes a friendship. So how many friendships can occur? You pick up at random uh, any two any two persons from that group, and you you say this. So how many possible ways you can pair them up? It is N C two, right? So that is N C two number of possible. So the thing is. in reality you see if you have got a, a very large network of say millions of nodes so you know millions of nodes means so millions into millions that means uh, you can you can assume that what will be the number of edges if it is a it's a complete graph but that hardly happens i mean it's, so generally real world graphs fortunately are not dense enough they are really sparse so you will they will have edges much much less than that of n c 2 okay or i mean v you can say it's v c 2 and because of that if the number of edges are too less compared to the maximum possible number of uh, edges possible then probably you should not opt for this adjacency matrix and you should opt for rather uh, adjacency list which will save a lot of space what the point Yes, sir. And at the same time, you know, I mean, I don't know how many, how big matrices you have dealt in your course, but when you deal with large matrices of say 10 to the power 5 cross 10 to the power 5, or 10 to the power 10 cross 10 to the power 10, even you know, it becomes very difficult in terms of the memory models that we use and all this. I mean, it takes a lot of time, maybe sometimes days, to calculate things and all. Okay, algorithms are simple, but it takes a huge time. So. Uh, sparse matrices where the most of the cells are zero is of uh, better we should try to avoid them although the 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 implementation becomes very trivial now this this is very trivial this is also simple but okay you have to write a bit piece of code but this becomes very trivial so uh, from now on we can try both this adjacency matrix adjacency matrix or adjacency list for representing graphs and uh, the the first uh, problem that you should consider is the dfs and bfs depth first class and bfs first class so that will consider in the next class i think many of you already know that how to perform bfs and bfs in graphs so we'll start with that and i'll assign a few interesting processing of graphs so can you tell me which of the class structure that we have used till now can be used to implement this adjacency list if we prefer to can you find some analogy that which one should i use which existing data structures that we have implemented throughout my class lectures which one should i use to implement a graph the best analogy sir is the total number of nodes uh, finite or it will be increasing yeah it is finite like assume that it is finite and static it's not changing so link list we can hmm, link list but it's not just a link list it's a collection of link lists it's a array of link hash lists hash matrix hello which one hash matrix yes so we don't call it as hash because i mean but, but the thing is the data structure is similar to a hash table right are you getting me yes sir so the data structure we do we definitely don't call a graph as a hash table but the data structure that we have used to represent a hash table the same data structure exactly the same data structure can be used to represent a graph adjacency list do you agree with this yes sir everybody uh, all others also can you see the nice analogy to this yes sir and yes sir in the, in the hash table uh like likewise in the hash table so you can have an additional say maybe additional field here you can add say additional field which will denote 
how many neighbors you have got so it's just like a degree and the number of neighbors is called a degree so basically the degree of a degree of b so degree of a is how much 3 degree of b is 2 then the degree of c is basically 2 degree of d is basically 1 2 3 4 degree of e is 2 degree of f is 3 degree of g is 0 so you can just add one more and in fact that is easily possible very much possible if you don't have a linked list whose header file whose header node i mean we can just have a header node uh, used for this purpose right that we know so we have defined a node class if you can recall we have used the node class to create a linked list class then we have used the linked list class to create a array of linked lists which represents a uh, which represented a actually a hash table and the same will represent now a graph data structure adjacency list so basically you can copy the same thing and just uh, i mean if you want you can change the names right you can just change the names so how can we change the names you can probably inherit that right you can inherit uh, and you, you can inherit that uh, and then you can change the names and within the change names you call the same values i mean i mean the same methods it will work okay so you just rename the interfaces and but use the same logic there right that's possible hello yes sir or you may want if you want you can manually do it also right so this representation is done once the representation is done so the rest of the bfs and dfs probably will be simple enough because you have to basically traverse through those lists to find out whom you are adjacent to that's all and maybe you would like to uh, maybe add another additional field as a tag which may be useful while you are traversing or many in many other cases so the thing is in this case the node class if you would like to might be uh, enhanced with some additional field like a tag field or something like this or is a reserve field like the the original node class which may be handy in this case sometimes is that okay hello yes sir so we just talked about the uh, the possible implementation of a graph graph data structure i mean uh, graph and and the corresponding data structure which implements it in the next class i'll focus on some processing activities uh, like dfs and bfs which will use the qr stack so a full fledged graph data uh, graph processing will involve you know the uh, the code reuse in terms of composition in terms of uh, using the stack and queue we have to call it and uh, you have to basically write a template graph class right so that Uh, no matter what type of information it is the nodes are having it can store it there okay so this will be the next assignment set so next class uh, let me see if i can take it this friday uh, i'll take the next class on this and there i'll uh, publish the next uh, assignments set so a little bit of graphs uh, use of graphs and i'll, uh, I'll share some files which you will process uh, and uh, maybe uh, I, i was just thinking of uh, trying to find out the popularity of a node in a in a social network where you would like to uh, you have to um, say calculate the eigen vectors and the eigen values and these are all about matrix processing so if you can uh, if you know what a matrix is so basically extend the matrix class we use the matrix class to represent a graph so there will be pretty simple so i said the reference to the algorithm page rank algorithm that can be used to um, find out the rank of a node in a graph okay and maybe after that a one one particular implementation of a tree class is important uh, so that will end up our more or less the course and maybe one class uh, i'll take on stls maybe an introductory class because still they are they are having so many things to uh, discuss about uh, it will take a lot of time but at least maybe we'll on that is still okay any any more questions any more questions on the assignments that i have given these are all um, done i mean already done you have to just use the same code and uh, tune it accordingly 
as you can see the graphs also the the entire code is done written you have to just use it any questions no sir are we having all the other uh, sessionals also going on other faculties also start their uh, yes, sessional sir. courses the pending courses more or less yes sir hello yes sir i am audible yes yes and i i guess there is no clash also in the timings this you don't have uh, too many of them also the sessionals uh, yes so sir so far we didn't have any clash there is no clash and uh, i think many of you although it is not mandatory but you are doing some internship also some are internship in some other places so i think even if you do those internships you can uh, listen to the tutorial videos and solve the problems later on so that is possible i guess uh, many of you have got some internship opportunities somewhere okay okay fine so if there are no more questions i'm leaving the meeting thank you sir